This video is going to show you how to export a Koiketsu model using the KK Blender Porter Pack, also known as KKBP. I'm going to show how to use the KKBP exporter to export the model from the game, how to use the KKBP importer to import the model into Blender, and then I'm going to show how you can save the model as an FBX file to use in a different program. I'm also going to show a really simple demo of me importing the model into Unity, but that's going to be its own video. I have a table linked in the description so you can check what program versions I used for everything. I'm using Blender 4.2 for this demo, so these are the versions that I'm going to use for each program. I've also got links for like all this stuff in the description, so I would recommend pausing the video and, you know, getting those things. Okay, so hopefully you downloaded everything that I just showed you. You're going to want to install the HF patch first because this is what lets you load mods and plugins and stuff like that. If you're using a pre-modded repack, like the better repack, then I think you can get away with not installing the HF patch, but you still need to use the repacks auto updater in the launcher. Now that your game can load plugins, you can install the KKBP exporter plugin. You can do this by going to your game folder and then go into the BepinX folder, and you can plop it right into this plugins folder. I'm on regular Koiketsu, so I'm going to use the exporter that's in this folder. Now when you open up the character creator, there's going to be an export button right up here at the top. There's quite a few options for the exporter, and if you want to know what any of these actually do, then I've got a link for that in the description. But for right now, I'm just going to click the Export Single Outfit checkbox and then click the Export button. This can take anywhere from 30 seconds to over 5 minutes, so if you have a really complex card and a terrible computer, then be prepared to wait for quite a while. I decided to benchmark everything, so here's how long it took to export a few different cards on my computer. When it's finished, you'll get a folder that has everything in it. You can keep it here if you want to, but I'm just going to move this folder to my downloads folder. And that's it for the exporting section, so let's open Blender and import it. In order to import the model, you're going to need the MMD Tools extension and the KKBP importer extension. You can install MMD Tools from the extensions website. And KKBP is not on the extensions website. I don't think their terms of service will let me do that. So you got to download the zip file and drag it in. Okay, that's all the setup, so let's get into it. There's a lot of options for the KKBP importer, and I'll just give you the highlights. If you plan on using the model inside of Blender, there's a really nice Rigify armature you can use. If you want to use Cycles, there's basic support for that right here. And the plugin can create a dark version of every color, sort of like how the game works. But if you don't want any dark colors, you can just disable it. I'm going to leave everything as the default and then click the import model button. And then import the PMX file from my export folder. This process will also take a while, so here's some more time estimates that I recorded. Okay, excellent. The model is now in Blender. I would recommend that you go to the scripting tab and then go to the bottom of the KKBP log just to make sure that you didn't get any errors during the import. If your import was successful, you'll see this KKBP import finished line at the bottom. So if you don't have any errors, you now have two options. You can totally 100% go straight to the shading tab and make sure everything looks correct on your model. I'm gonna call that option A. However, this version of the shader is very heavy, so if you don't have the best computer, you might want to go with option B, which I'm going to show a bit later. If you want to skip ahead to that part, I'll put a timestamp on the screen. So anyway, go ahead and click on the shading tab. It might take a little bit for the shaders to compile, so just wait for that. I'm also going to get rid of the armature, and I usually like starting with the hair, so let's start with that. You can choose any material by either selecting it in this menu, or you can go into edit mode and turn on face select, 
and any face that you choose will automatically select the corresponding material in the material list. This is the KKBP material setup. Some materials have a slightly different setup, but this is pretty much what you can expect for almost every single material. There's a lot of stuff in here, but really the main three you have to worry about are these three right here. This one controls the colors, this one controls the textures, and this one controls the positioning of those textures. So let's explore the colors group first. Most of this is pretty self-explanatory. You've got a group for what the light colors look like, another one for what the dark colors look like, and you can switch between the light and the dark colors with these two toggles up here. So let's say I want to change the hair color to this. And let's say I wanted less hair detail. And let's say I wanted to set the fade color to a blue. And of course, you can do all of this for the dark colors too. Some hairs also have a main texture or a main text, but this one doesn't have one. So when I turn it on, it's just going to show up as completely black. But if I swap over to one of these white spots, these pieces of hair do have a main text. This will automatically turn on and the main text should show up. Now, unfortunately, someone made this main text completely white, so it's showing up as completely white. So I'm just going to mess with this other slider down here to give the hair color. So that was the colors group. Let's go into the textures group now. All of the textures from the PMX folder are loaded into here. If you want to see what the texture actually looks like, you can just drag any of these onto the material output. So I'm going to drag the hair detail on there. And now if I go back into the colors group, you can see that this green portion of the hair detail mask corresponds to the hair detail strength parameter here. And if I drag the hair color mask onto the material output, then you can see that this green channel on the hair color mask correlates to this dark fade color. And the blue channel on the color mask correlates to this light fade color. So hopefully as I go back and forth here, you can see that the textures group and the colors group are very integrated. The colors group relies on the textures group. If there's a slot for a texture in the textures group, then it's probably being used somewhere in this group. And the final group that you have to worry about is the positioning group. The only thing you can reposition for the hair is the highlights. So I'm going to open that up. And I've already got a mapping node, so if you want to use this, you can use this, or you can replace it with something else. And if you want to, like, tweak exactly how this looks, you can just find this UV map and then edit it in the UV editing tab. All right, let's go over the close now. As you can see, this has the same exact setup. I'm going to start with the colors again. Same thing as before, you've got a light color group and a dark color group. The names and stuff are slightly different, but it's really just the same thing. In fact, if you put them right next to each other, you can see the similarities between the hair and the clothes. Very easy, very straightforward. The only thing that is not straightforward with the clothes is the main texture sliders. Clothes usually have a main text, so something like this is just a PNG file. You can't edit the colors of the PNG file, so you gotta go down here and turn these sliders off, and now this piece of clothes is not using the PNG, 
it's using all of those textures in the texture group. So now you can edit the colors to whatever you want. And again, just like the hair, you can confirm what color goes where by checking the detail mask and the color mask. The stuff that causes white hair can also happen with the clothes. This usually happens if your clothing texture isn't a main text and it's like an overlay or something that someone made and the importer cannot tell the difference between the two, so it can do random stuff like this. And the final group is, again, the positioning. Clothes can have patterns, so I'm just going to show that you can change the pattern position and all that using the skirt. I also just wanted to show real quick, some characters have materials that are supposed to be semi-transparent, so they might show up like this. You can fix this by just setting the render method to blended. Okay, let's move on to the face. A lot of these are hopefully self-explanatory. I do want to point out the overlays on the bottom here. I don't know if these are loaded in automatically, so I'm going to show you how to do it. All you need to do is find the textures group and go to the overlays section and load in any image. And then I'm going to position it. There's a lot of things on the body object that have special material setups. So obviously the teeth looks nothing like the eye line up, looks nothing like the eye whites, but these are all really simple and not worth going over. You can check these out yourself. The only other body material that's worth mentioning is the eye material. This eye texture is actually a really nice PNG file that the exporter plugin creates, but you do have the ability to export all of the eye textures and actually set all the colors and stuff if you wanted to. I'm not going to show that here, but if you want to know how to do it, I have a link in the description. Also, if you're wondering why the body is transparent in some areas, it's to prevent the body from clipping through the clothes. There's some more info in the FAQ if you actually do need to have the body visible. When you're done editing the materials, I highly suggest using the Finalize Materials button. This will take all of the materials and convert them to PNG files, and Blender can load those PNG files way faster than it can load those complex node groups, so it pretty much just gives you a performance boost. This can take a few minutes to do, but it's totally worth it. This is how long it took for my computer to finalize all of the materials. When a material is finalized, you won't be able to edit any of the colors. If you want to edit anything after finalizing it, you have to change the material back to the dash org version. And you also need to set this slider all the way to zero. Now you can edit the material again. And you can refinalize any materials that you've made edits to by just making sure that this slider is still zero. And then you can click the finalize materials button and it'll update everything. This is basically the option B that I mentioned before. So you can either take option A where you import, then edit every material, then finalize everything. Or you can take option B where you import, finalize everything, and then swap back to the dash org version for only the materials that you want to edit. All right, hopefully that was enough information to get you started. I definitely encourage going through the colors and sliders and stuff yourself to see what everything does. And if you want to see how to export the FBX file and see an example of how to import it into Unity, that should be on screen right now.